Thank you, Attorney General Bonta. I first want to thank each and every one of you who have come here today. It's bittersweet. It's bitter because of the circumstances that brought us here today, the unnecessary loss of lives due to road policing here in California. But it's sweet because we have a governor who has recognized that change is needed. We have a legislative body who recognizes that change is needed in law enforcement. I'm honored to author SB2, Police Decertification, better known as the Kenneth Ross Jr. Initiative. Kenneth Ross Jr. was a young man who grew up right here in this neighborhood, whose home abutted this park. And you say, well, why are we here at this park today? It's because right here at this park is where Kenneth Ross Jr. lost his life. So we're here to recognize him. It was three years ago, a young man who was simply running across the park, having some issues, and instead of sending a crisis team, he was shot in the back and killed in broad daylight by an officer who really had no business being here in the city of Gardena. And the reason I say that is because I've lived here 52 years, grew up as a kid, and I knew every officer by personal first name. And when I heard about the shooting, I did not know who this officer was. And the reason why is because he transferred from Orange County after being involved in three questionable shootings there. SB2 is the type of legislation that will make sure the wash, rinse, and repeat cycle that is happening in California where an officer can commit a crime and quit before being fired or even be fired, get hired by another agency. We have numerous examples of officers who have engaged in misconduct, who have either been fired or left the department, as I stated, and then take their misconduct to another community. This is unfair to all these families. It's unfair to the communities as a whole. We saw this happen a few weeks ago here in my district as well, in the city of Torrance, where two officers were fired last year and 11 others were walked out of the department for vandalism and racist behavior and brutality. The two officers who were charged that left the department last year, but without strong decertification process, they were able to be hired by another department and continue their racist and hateful misconduct in another community. They are working now today. Had SB2 been in place, those guys would not have been hired. If these officers were not good enough for Torrance, they shouldn't be good enough for any other community here in the state of California. SB2 will end the cycle of what I said, the wash, rent, and repeat cycle of police misconduct and ensure all officers in California are held to the same fair and appropriate standards. This bill has been a priority of mine for over a year uh, and more so following last year's nationwide call for police reform. As many might know, I introduced SB 731 last year, and we were unable, due to the truncated legislative session and heavy, heavy lobbying by uh, police unions, to get that to the floor. And so we huddled back up, the pro tem and I, Senator Tony Atkins, who I have to recognize as the joint author on this legislation, and she said, we're coming back with a new bill, and that's what SB 2 is all about. This bill is not just about holding bad officers accountable for their misconduct, it's also about rebuilding trust between our communities and law enforcement. And that's critical right now. As we will know, many times it says black and brown people hate the police. We don't hate the police. We fear the police. We fear the police due to lack of trust. This will help establish trust. No one should fear the police when they call 911 or encounter an officer that their call for help will be met by a bad officer who can turn that emergency into a potential tragedy. We must trust the state to develop standards to ensure we have the best doctors, the best lawyers, the best contractors, even the best elected officials and teachers. The same should apply to law enforcement. It is time that California joins the other 46 states to ensure that we hold police officers to the same high standards as well. Again, I want to thank the governor. Newsom for signing this bill and the three others that you heard today and for having California continue to lead in police reform and criminal justice, as well as his legislative office for their diligently working with us the past, uh, over the past few months. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize Jessica on the governor's staff who 
put in tremendous hours of negotiation to get us where we here where we are today. Senator President Pro Tem Tony Atkins could not be here, but she sends her regard. She's the joint author on this bill, but I want to recognize Amy Alley, her right hand person who worked on this bill. Give Amy Alley a round of applause because she lived and breathed this bill. But we as legislators far too often get credit for the legislation that has passed, but it's really the diligent staff work. And I would be remiss if I didn't recognize the young man for the last year and a half who has let this bill be his life in, his, in my office, a young man who came to me as a fellow two years ago and had an incredible work ethic, none other than Chris Morales. Give this young man a round of applause for his incredible work. I want to thank all the co-authors as well, uh, as members uh, of the, and also members of the Legislative Black Caucus, which I chair. This was a priority bill for the Legislative Black Caucus. I also want to take this opportunity to recognize some of the amazing community advocates who worked with us nonstop to make sure we had a product that we can all be proud of. LA Voices, Tina McKinner, Black Lives Matter, Dr. Adula, Sheila, I appreciate that you, ACLU. ACR, uh, where's Mr. Uh, Nunez? But anyway, Anti-Police Terror Project, Black Lives Matter, Los Angeles, as I stated, California Faculty Association, California Families for United for Justice, California United for Restorative Justice, Policy Link, Stop, Divide, Stop Coalition, and Youth Justice Coalition. And most importantly, also, the uh, Recording Industry of America. The Recording Association of America, these guys stepped up. And I want to recognize one artist in particular, Aloe Black, for his courageous stand and using his platform to make sure the message got out on how important this uh, issue was. So I want to thank all of you who were involved, led your voice, your time. Again, it's because of your tireless advocacy over the last year that we get a bill that we can all be proud of and the governor can affix his signature to. And I finally want to say thank you to the hundreds of individuals, families, but most importantly, Kenneth Ross' family, this is his mother and his siblings here, the Quinta family, his mother and the, uh, his family here, and recognizing their tragedy, but their strong courage and support to stand with us and stand united. And I'd be remiss too if I didn't recognize some folks in law enforcement who were courageous enough to show their support today. I want to recognize Chief Cecil Rambo, LAX Police Chief, a real reformer in law enforcement. And we had Gardena's Police Chief, Mike Safel. I don't see him anywhere, but I appreciate his presence. Despite some of the folks who are making comments, we appreciate their presence because these individuals are standing united, saying it's time for reform. So again, this is a major victory for California. It's a major victory, and it sends a message all across the nation. Thank you for being here. Without further ado, this would all would not be possible if it wasn't for our governor agreeing to come here to sign these four pieces of legislation, but also paying tribute to Kenneth Ross, understanding that he tragically lost his life here. The governor of the state of California, Gavin Newsom.